the story of some of your friends and neighbors, the people who are your fellow employees in the Upjohn Company. And now that you're one of them, this is your story as well as theirs. That's Roy Graham. He's doing some interesting work up in Control Lab these days. And that's Bill Johnson. He's been a foreman for the past 10 years. And over there is Jane Wright up in the main office. She's been doing secretarial work for a year and a half now. <laughs> and there's Sam Harris from the sales department. <laughs> He's probably still thinking about the bowling score he rolled up in the league last night. And this is Mary Nash, just starting on the job this morning. To Mary, as to all others who join our company, this is the beginning of a new adventure. And right now, she's scheduled for a talk with a member of the personnel division. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Won't you sit down? Thank you. I'm glad to see you with us, Mary. I know you're going to like it here. I'm sure I will. I have several friends working here. You'll have a lot more friends as time goes on. It must take a lot of people to run a company like this. It does. And every job is important to the person who is doing it, and to all the rest of us, too. Whether that job is in the general office, or doing research, or production work, or keeping the plant running, it's all part of one big job that calls for teamwork from all of us. No matter what your job is, you'll find that most everyone is interested in helping you, if you are really interested yourself. Our job here in personnel is to help you, getting started now and whenever you need us. A lot of things will seem new and strange at first, and you'll probably have a lot of questions. You will find some of your answers in this little booklet. It contains a lot of basic information about the company, but if you're in doubt about anything, see your foreman or supervisor. He's closest to everyone in his section, and always ready to help you. And that's sound advice for the men, too. As witness our friend George Newcomb, who ponders a question while seeking the advice of his foreman. Yes, George, what can I do for you? Here's my first week's time report, Mr. Johnson. Oh. Is it made out correctly? Hmm? Why, yes, George. Everything seems okay. Well, it sure is swell not to have to punch a time clock. Yep, it works out pretty well. Most people feel a sense of responsibility when they're on their own. By the way, uh, how's my work been stacking up so far? You're doing fine, George. Just keep on the way you've started. You know, your future here is pretty much up to you. Responsibility is what counts when you're considered for promotion and more pay. Take the foreman in that department over there, for instance. Now, when he started here five years ago, he was just a handyman. There's one thing I don't think I'll ever be able to learn. What's that? Well, all these different products we make. How can you ever remember them all? Seems like that sort of bothered me when I started. And I still don't know them all. Just remember, they all fall into three major groups. First, there's pills, tablets, hard capsules, and effervescent salts. Then there are fluid products and ointments. And third, sterile solutions and vaccines. <laughs> of course, I know that covers a lot of ground, but you'll get used to the ones you have to know fast enough. Yes, it takes a lot of different items to make up the thousand or so different pharmaceuticals that carry the Upjohn label. And there is a way of getting started on recognizing some of them. Pills are the company's oldest item. They're round, like balls, and coated. Tablets, on the other hand, are flatter and are generally replacing pills in medical use. Hard capsules are made of soluble gelatin and are filled with various prescribed ingredients. Effervescent salts are granular in form. 
Because of their effervescent base, they produce a palatable mixture when dissolved in water. The second group includes a good many fluid products which are convenient to use in liquid form. These include syrups, tinctures, emulsions, extracts, ointments, and soft capsules such as are used for certain vitamin products. The third major group includes sterile solutions and vaccines. These sterile products require the most scrupulous care in preparation and handling, for in no other pharmaceutical is human life so dependent upon purity of product. There's no chance for contamination here, no opportunity for a lurking microbe to find his way within these sealed containers. And when the time arrives for portioning into ampules, each flask is carefully removed to a special air-conditioned room to guard against possible infiltration of impurities during this critical procedure. As a further precaution, sterilized masks are worn to prevent even a breath from carrying a stray germ into the tiny bottles during filling. A measured quantity is drawn from the flask by this special pump, which ejects it through a slender nozzle down within the ampule, whose narrow neck is then hermetically sealed to exclude any possible contamination. Yes, these sterile solutions have to be pure, but regardless of type, every pharmaceutical product from the time it first enters the plant as a raw material through all stages of testing and production must be handled with scientific accuracy and meticulous care. Whether performing one of the more delicate steps and running an assay test, or doing one of the heavier jobs in handling the bulk material during production.
And so off they go to the warehouse for a brief respite before distribution. This sturdy little tractor provides more than horizontal locomotion. It's a truck and elevator all in one. And if you think it hasn't a job to do, just watch it park this load on the upper shelf. But nothing stays in the warehouse very long. Not with so many distribution centers all over the country calling for supplies. And in time, each carton will eventually find itself destined for one of the company's branch offices, such as those located in Kalamazoo, New York, San Francisco, Kansas City, Memphis, Atlanta, Dallas, Cleveland, Boston, Minneapolis, and others too. But no matter how far afield her many products roam, the company never loses track of even the smallest unit. Every batch of every single item carries its own control number. As an example, this particular number, H5338, is on permanent file in our control records, so that H5338 and the complete life history of that particular lot may be referred to at any time for verification. You can't be too careful when you're making pharmaceuticals, and the control laboratory sees to it that every single item meets the strict requirements set down for it. Any variation in formula or in purity will hold up production on an item anywhere along the line until control is satisfied. But this is only one of the many laboratories needed in running an organization like ours. The making of pharmaceuticals is a complex business requiring teamwork from many sources. Research is the lifeblood of our company and goes on constantly within the organization, ever probing further for hidden answers, ever delving deeper for better understanding, continually making use of the stored up knowledge of the past, yet always looking ahead into the future, developing new products and improving old ones. Often suggestions for new products come from the medical department, a substantial part of our business being the result of such products developed within the past few years. And thanks to the cooperation between doctors and research workers in their ceaseless and untiring efforts in conducting thousands of experiments in pharmaceutical and medical fields, countless human lives have been saved by the many drugs made available in communities all over the world. All of this work has one main goal, purity and reliability of products for the safety of the millions who will rely upon them in later use. And this goal is a purpose in which every worker can feel he's had a part. For ours is a community of interests, each working toward this goal and each sharing the pride and satisfaction that comes with turning out a product that benefits humanity. All of this requires a great deal of care and responsibility, for you can't be too careful when you're making pharmaceuticals, and you can't be too clean. Everything must have its place, and everything must be kept clean. Good housekeeping is part of the responsibility of each employee, and safe operation is of utmost importance. Accident prevention is vital to everyone, so vital that special committees have been picked to study conditions and devise means for keeping everyone safety conscious. It's a continuous educational campaign that makes use of every modern means of preventing accidents. For by preventing accidents, we can avoid needless injury. This means observing all safety precautions and requires constant care and attention from all of us. It means keeping machinery and equipment in repair, for a neglected machine not only invites trouble, but helps promote accidents as well. Therefore, all equipment is kept in top-notch order. And as a further safety measure throughout the plant, exposed moving parts on machines are painted some bright, conspicuous color. Controls and switches are painted blue. So you see, safety here is more than just a word. If, however, an accident should occur, immediate medical attention should be secured from the industrial health office, where a physician and nurses are in attendance. 
While these facilities aren't intended to take the place of private medical care, they help prevent accident complications that are often the cause of an otherwise minor mishap developing into something of major proportions. Safety benefits everyone, but it's particularly good insurance for you, the individual employee. And speaking of insurance, there's the free life insurance policy you get from the company. This is known as term insurance and is given to you without cost. Its exact amount depends upon your length of service and your family status. But suppose you get sick, then what? After six months service, you're entitled to join the hospitalization and surgical plans, like Fred Miller did some time ago. Hello, Fred. How are you? For 15 years, I've never been sick. And now this. Oh, come, come now, Fred. Isn't as bad as all that. Have you ever had appendicitis? No. Just supposing you didn't have your hospital and surgical insurance. Guess I'd really have something to worry about then. But it's a relief to know my salary's going right on while I'm here in bed. You've done a darn good job over the years. Why? Even an employee who's only been around a year gets three weeks sick pay as a minimum. Oh, you're pretty reliable. <laughs> Even though you do cheat at solitaire. I'm worried about how they're getting along at the plant without me. Not that I'm indispensable, <laughs> but... <laughs> Just what I thought when I retired. Couldn't imagine how the company could get along without me after 40 years. Now all you have to do is worry about when the fishing season starts. And, uh, <clears throat> hunting. You know, I've never given much thought to what I'll do when I retire. <laughs> Shucks. You've got another 20 years to go before you're 65. That's normal retirement age. Well, anyway, I'm paying in my contributions regularly toward my pension. And the company pays in a lot more than you do. Yep, when you get to my age, you can just relax and... Enjoy yourself. Ah, uh, this is the time of day I like. Ah, yes. This is the time of day everybody likes. Our cafeteria is a popular place. And being right in the building, it's convenient, too. And that goes for the lounge rooms as well. These rooms adjoin the cafeteria and are used by many employees for relaxation during periods of leisure. But it's food we're interested in right now. Well, here's our friend Mary, halfway through her first day. And it looks as though she's already made friends with some of the people she'll be working with. I thought I had lost you two for a minute. Oh, we didn't mean to rush off. We thought you were right behind us. Let's go. I know the food's all so tempting, but all oh, those calories. Oh, it all looks so good. And besides, I'm starved. My vacation time was approved today. Three whole weeks. Three weeks vacation? Mm-hmm. And with pay, too. You see, Jane's an old-timer. But after you've been here five years, you'll get three weeks, too. I'll ignore that old-timer remark. You'll get two weeks with pay after your first year. I've got to remember to buy some vitamins to take home today. You know, we can all buy company products at a special employee's discount. Mm. Yes. It takes a lot of different people to make a company like ours. For example, the Kalamazoo branch performs an important function as one of our sales and distribution units. Within this branch, sales activities and general distribution of the company's products are handled for this area. This work is just as essential as research and production, and every branch employee may feel justly proud of his contribution toward the growth and development of the company. Similar branches are located in key cities throughout the country, and in each branch, sales representatives, like our friend Sam Harris, make personal visits to call on doctors in their territory to introduce new pharmaceuticals and to acquaint the medical profession with the proven high standards and quality of our products. Special explanatory material is prepared and distributed by mail to doctors and hospitals, reporting clinical findings on new products, 
as well as items of general interest to the profession. Thus, through the calls made by our salesmen to the members of the medical profession, new products, as well as older ones, are introduced to the physician and made available by their prescriptions in drug stores and hospital pharmacies throughout the nation. Thus does Upjohn serve humanity in furnishing the pharmaceuticals that have come to mean so much to all of us. But it takes more than materials to make an institution. It takes a lot of different people doing a lot of different jobs to make a company like ours. And to the men and women who work here, these are more than just jobs, for theirs is an important service to all mankind. These are jobs that require many skills and many aptitudes. And these are people doing those jobs with integrity and good fellowship. For ours is a community of interests in the hours of work as well as in the hours of leisure and recreation. Together, we share the benefits of those whose efforts have helped to build our company. And together, we look ahead toward the promise of the future. For together, we are the Upjohn Company. Thank you.